Hi, my name is Julian Oes. I work for Atheron in Switzerland, where I help maintain PX4 and MavSDK. Today, I want to talk about PX4 failsafe testing using MavSDK. Failures can always happen, but as PX4 is maturing as a platform, um, as we're looking more, more and more into beyond visual line of sight flights, as some of the vehicles are getting heavier, and as, as we're doing steps towards certification, we absolutely need to make sure that failures are handled correctly, consistently, and also predictably. Um, the first step to get there is to actually be able to test the failsafe behavior. Once we have done tests in place, we can add missing failsafe functionality or fix existing ones. Um, Last but not least, we also want to properly document the failsafes so that an operator knows exactly what they have to expect when a failure happens. So in order to test failsafes, we first need to need a way to inject a failure. And for this failure injection, we have a couple of requirements. First of all, it should not just work for software in the loop, but also for hardware in the loop, so a bench setup like you can see it on the picture, or real flights, real testing. The triggering of a failure needs to be possible to be done manually, as well as automated for um, continuous integration. And we should never, ever trigger a failure in normal operation. So, so really the failure injection should be a completely separate and protected testing mode and not happen um, with, while normal flight is taking place. Um, so we came up with a solution and that's to use Mavlink commands. Um, why? That's because we already have the Mavlink interface for all of these cases. We, have, we use Mavlink for Siddle Hill and real flying. And so that just makes sense. And we can easily automate it using MavSDK. Um, in order to prevent accidental failure injection, this will be protected by a parameter. So um, without actually setting that parameter, all injected failures um, won't work, will just fall right off. So what are these possible failures? Um, for sure, sensors are in there, um, but then also uh, components that can fail like the battery, um, motor, servos, etc., or the link is a common one. Um, so the RC or, or MAFLINK telemetry. Um, when I talk about failure cases, I mean the way in how a failure can happen. So it can be just off or stuck, or then the data can actually be bad, you know, ranging from garbage to some offset, um, as well as a timing problem, such as a slower data or uh, delayed data being transmitted. So how does this failure injection work via Mavlink? Um, Basically, a Mavlink command with the failure injection is sent um, from the Mav from using Mavlink from MavSDK into the Mavlink module of PX4. There, if the parameter for failure injection is not set, it falls right off. Um, if it is set, then it will be forwarded to whichever module um, is in charge of that sense value or actuator output. And so the actual failure is simulated on the PX4 side and not on a simulation side. And the reason for that is that we also want to be able to use this for real flights where there is no simulator present, obviously. Um, once we put this into testing automation, so into, into CI, the way it works is that we have a test runner. The test runner spawns 
um, everything needed. So as usual for SIDL, that's PX4 and Gazebo. But then additionally, it runs an executable uh, based on MavSDK, which contains a test case. And a test case in this case could be um, that it starts a flight, um, a mission or a manual flight. And then at some point, it injects a failure. After that, it just monitors the behavior of PX4. It checks uh, the flight profile. It checks that PX4 does the right thing, reacts accordingly to the failure. At the end of one test case, everything is torn down. The logs are collected um, and um, the actual result is checked. So current state is that the first version of the Mavlink messages have been defined and that's merged. And we have failure injection working using PX4 internal system commands. And that's currently in an open pull request. And then we also have failure injection possible um, using MavSDK. That's also an open pull request. And so now I want to show two examples. First, a manual failure injection, and then an automated test with failure injection. Both times will just simulate um, GPS being lost. <clears throat> so the first example is manual. Um, so this is just normal SIDL flight. We're doing a takeoff from Q ground control. It's taken off. And now we want to simulate a failure. Um, first thing that we have to do is actually enable failure injection. So we do param set sys failure n1. So that's enabled. And now we do the actual failure injection. So failure GPS off. That's done now. And now it takes a couple of seconds for PX4 to realize that GPS really is gone and is not coming back. And at that point, it decides to go into blind land. That's because we don't have a joystick connected, so we can't take over manually. So that's sort of the best it can do in this situation. So now let's look at the same thing, but as part of an automated test. So here we are using the MFSDK test runner. We are running one um, case, which is land on GPS lost during mission. And let's just do that for Iris again. So what's happening is that a mission has been, or first of all, Gazebo has been started, PX4 has been started, then a mission is uploaded to PX4 and started. And now at once waypoint one is reached, we inject the failure. So again, it takes a couple of seconds. Now it realized, okay, GPS is not coming back and it gave up and it again does a blind land. And using my SDK, we're now checking what is it actually doing? Um, is it actually landing? Is it um, detecting having landed and then disarming? And it did all of that, so that's a pass. So uh, I want to talk a bit about first results. While working on this pull request, we actually already found um, a recent regression. Um, luckily, this was only in master a couple of weeks. So, uh, it was uh, lucky to to find it already. And, and that's exactly the sort of thing, the sort of regression that we want to prevent. Uh, in this case, what happened was that if GPS was lost during position control, instead of switching back to altitude control, it would just land, go into blind land, and the pilot had no influence whatsoever. Um, while working on this pull request, we, we also found a couple of other issues, um, less severe than this one, but nevertheless, things we need to look into. And as we go, we will find presumably more issues as we, as we go. So what's the future of fail-safe testing? Um, we need to expand the test coverage for sure. So we need to add VTOL and fixed wing tests. Right now it's all multi-copter. We need to add more failure units so we need to test more of the components failing and also the cases so we need to um, 
add various checks. So not just off or stuck, but also uh, intermittent failures or um, subtle errors like um, small offsets in sensor values, etc. And then eventually we can also start testing combined failures, which will, might be quite tricky to react the property to them. Um, then we want to generalize those tests, which are just um, running for SIDL right now, to HIDL and, and real world tests. Um, the plumbing is already there, just sort of needs to, needs to be enabled. And then in general, we always want to improve the testing robustness, so we can improve the, the actual checks. Um, we could add log analysis, and always we need to make sure to reduce the false positives to, to prevent um, CI from, from failing um, a test when actually everything was, was fine. And with that, I conclude my, uh, my talk. Thanks a lot. Um, I'm looking forward to comments, questions, and contributions. Thank you.